Hello YouTube, I'm going to start another series. Uh, I'll get back to the trapdoor once the weather improves. I'm going to start a series on uh, making ammo for the uh, percussion sharps, making combustible cartridges. Now uh, this is the gun we'll be shooting, making ammo for and shooting. This is an 1859 model. It's got the, you can tell by the patch box on it. This is a very old IAB uh, sharps. If, my, I, if I'm correct, and I could be wrong here, uh, I believe Garrett started making these and then IAB bought them out. And this is one of those earlier ones. This one does have an original lock on it. Uh, when I got it, the guy I bought it off of had that put on there. It uh, helps with the trigger pull, makes it a little more crisp. And uh, since I compete with this gun, that's what you want. Uh, if you ever shot any of these Italian repros, you know most of them leak really bad. Uh, right here in the breach area. Now, you know, you could be shooting this thing after five or six rounds, you go to open the action, and it's incredibly hard to open when you're shooting live ammo. It blanks, it don't matter. But, uh, I had a modification done. A fellow named Charlie Holland works on these, among some other people who do work on these things. Uh, what he did, he, uh, takes the breech block and makes it solid. See this, but if you've ever come apart, you know that this portion of it's usually hollow right in here, and this gas check plate will come right off, and you can clean this area well. What he's done is he's made this all solid, all one piece, and this gas check plate no longer comes off, it's part of the block, I guess. And then he takes he puts a sleeve in here, a two part, two piece sleeve. This one of it stays in there, and this is the part that comes out. As you can see there, right here, around here, is where an O-ring goes. You put an O-ring, rubber O-ring on that, and then you put, uh, just cover that with grease. Stick this back in there, put it all together. And what that does is that O-ring puts a little, a little bit of tension on this, on the breech block. So now it makes a perfect seal. And there's no gas at least, and you can shoot this all day with this system right here. He does this, and there's several other people, I can't think of their names, they work on them, tune them up. Uh, so, first thing you're going to need, obviously, is a bullet mold. This is uh, kind of limited on uh, bullet molds at the moment. Uh, I've had a rapine, and I've had the, uh, this one is a moose. I like this one. This is a moose mold. It comes out of a mold of a 544 diameter. It's about 180 gr or, uh, 480 grains. Uh, they're kind of expensive though, 100 and a quarter, I think, for a double cavity, but it's, they're a really good mold. Uh, they sell two different sizes of this. This is the Christmas tree, ringtail Christmas tree for the sharks. They sell this one, the 544 size, and they sell one that's in the 5555 5, caliber. I think that's for the Army Sports. I'm, I, don't quote me on that though. You have to, what you have to do is you have to slug your barrel to make sure what size it is. Mine, this one here, slugs right at 539. A buddy of mine has a Petter Sole, and I think his is around the same. 539, 540, somewhere in there. So this 544 was the obvious choice. Now, I don't size them or anything, I just I shoot them as cast. Uh, it's a soft lead, that way you know, it's swaging down five to six thousandths. So it's a soft lead, so it doesn't create too much pressure when it does that. And it shoots it just fine. Uh, 42 grains of GoX 2F is what I use. Now, if any of you have ever made cartridges for, for blanks or Taking around with it. Uh, the cartridges most people make, I've seen, when you chamber it, you close the action up, it shaves off some of the cartridge. Well, there's two reasons I really don't like that. Uh, one, when we're competing with these, we're trying to load and fire as fast as we can. It's the uh, North South Skirmish Association where we shoot them, and you're trying to break as many targets as you can as fast as you can. The team that breaks their targets in the shortest amount of time wins. So, obviously, you're trying to get get as much ammo accurately done range of course. So whenever you cut off that cartridge you got all kinds of crap here. You gotta get out of the way, clean off, blow it off, or whatever you do. That takes up time. Another reason I don't like it is you don't know exactly how much powder you're getting into the chamber every time. It could be diff probably different every time. Now how much difference does that make? I don't know. But I'm not willing to try it. The tubes I make are uh, the exact, pretty well not exact, but they're pretty close to the same size as my chamber. This is one of the tubes. They go all the way in there. They don't shave anything off. The back, I've glued uh, hair curler paper on it. The flash from the cap goes right through that. And uh, if you have, uh, speaking on that, if you have problems with it going off, you might want to try and 
get some numbered drill bits. This is what I had to do. Get numbered drill bits and just keep going up in size until you find until you get a large flash hole large enough to set these off. Because sometimes they have a problem with that. Uh, but I'm going to show you the process. We're going to nit we're going to mix up our nitrate and water solution. We're going to nitrate the papers. We're going to roll them. Well, that stuff. You can hear my dogs in the background playing. But uh, so the first thing you're going to need is a bolt mold. You're also going to need a mandrel. You can probably make one of these out of a wooden down rod and put tape around it. But or you could have buy a piece of plastic, have a machinist turn you one down. Now, yeah, if you go that route, I'll give you the measurements for this one. The diameter of the mandrel itself is 0.474. So anywhere close to that's fine. It's not an exact science. Now you want you don't want the whole mandrel to be that size because you want something to grab onto. Uh, the depth of it, and this is not critical, but the depth of it is about an inch and a half, just over an inch and a half. And the whole length is well long enough to fit in your hand like like so, like this. So, to figure out what size tubes you need, my chamber takes a tube that's about 1.2 inches in length. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our bullet, we're going to put it into the chamber, just a bullet, push it in there. Now we're going to take our dial counters, or something to measure with, it can be a dial rod, you just put a mark on it. Find the back of that bullet, and go up to the face of the breech, right up to the face of it. So when we do that, I give this a measurement of about one inch, roughly. You know, this is not an exact science here. So now we need to take one more measurement. So I can get this bullet out of here, and then we'll measure the from the base of the bullet to the actual ring tail itself. So. If you look at this bullet, if we get a close up of this bullet here, I'll show you what I'm going to do. You can see there's the base of it, right here. Here's the base, and then here's the ring tail portion. Glue will go into this portion of the bullet, the ring tail, and that will keep it secured in the cartridge. Now we measured from this point to the face of the chamber. Since the paper cartridge is going to cover up all of this, we need to know what this, from the measurement from this, back of the ring tail, the base of the actual bullet. So, we're going to measure that. And again, this is a really exact science. So I want to make it you not know, really in cartridge or nothing. So, that is about, it's just under 0.2 inches. So, I'm going to call that 0.2. So, we add those together and it's 1.2 inches, like I said. So, these tubes, and they can be a little short, and I'll show you why when we make them, but these need to be around 1.2 inches or so from it for my chamber and that's that's pretty close what they are they're a little long but that's all right because whenever you go to chamber it'll compress the powder and all that good stuff so with that information we'll take a uh, printer paper and what, what we'll do is we'll take our printer paper take your counters or whatever you have to measure with make your lines uh now i can't remember whatever the wrap it around this, so uh, which will now make another video and we'll make we'll make the uh, we'll lay out the paper and I'll give you a better measurement for that. But I'm thinking it's right around two and a half or three inches, but I cannot really remember. But what we'll do is we'll lay out our grid on our paper and that's gonna be our master. And then we'll take that, put it on a printer and print off a bunch of them. And we'll take that master when we're done, we'll put it up somewhere for safe keep safe keeping. And then uh, we'll we'll nitrate our we'll mix our water and potassium nitrate and uh, We'll put the, the paper in a pan and we'll fill it up, that pan up with our water and potassium nitrate. We'll take that paper out, let it dry. Once it dries, it's going to have a lot of crystals on it. It'll be crystal of that potassium nitrate stuck to that paper. That's what you want. And we'll, we'll cut all that up. And then uh, we'll cut up uh, hair curler papers after that, about one inch square. And we'll fabricate some sharps ammo. Now, uh, once you've got all this done, once it's all put together, it's going to look something like this. The very last step, you let that dry overnight when you glue it together. You're going to want to mix up a bullet lube, a bullet lube that you like, and then dip this, the projectile, in the bullet lube. Definitely not a good thing to shoot these without some kind of bullet lubricant on them. 
because you'll let up the barrel, fouling gets really hard, it becomes really hard to clean. Now, if you don't want to send your sharps off, you want to try something before you send it off to have it modified. What I did before I had this one modified, but I would, uh, this hollow cavity here before it was made solid, I would fill that full of white lithium grease, and that would really help keep the fouling in here soft, help, help keep it running for a little while. I would still have to break it down periodically throughout the matches, keep it running, but you know, if you're just going to go out and plank and take her around, that's probably all, all you'll need. But if you're if you plan on shooting this one of these all day, then I would highly recommend having this done. Now, there's uh, the same fella who makes these, who modifies these. He also sells uh, cardboard tubes. If you don't feel like going through all this, this is just for nostalgia reasons. But if you don't want to make all these these tubes, uh, if you do a search on the internet for Charlie's tubes, I think you'll find it, and I'll I'll verify that, and I'll get back to you on the next video. But he sells it just a cardboard tube. You tell him what length you need. You find the length you need by how we just what I just showed you. I find that, and you tell him how many you want. He'll send them to you. And you just have to, they're hollow all the way through. You just have to tape up one end. I used uh, when I was using them. I'd use a uh, paper medical tape. And maybe you could crack out a bunch of them that way. Then you charge them and glue them to your case. That's it. Uh, all right. Well, uh, our next step will be uh, laying out a paper. And I see again. I'm, we're going to lay out a paper. Uh, make our squares and after that we're going to make a water nitrate solution uh, so to then I'll see you later